All righty. Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another live stream with myself, Dave Gilardi, and Jeffrey Carpenter as we dig into fun with the Killer Video Reference app and, uh, and, and just foray here into reworking all of our Docker configuration and making it that much better. So what are we doing today, Jeff? What are we doing today? Uh, well, I think you talked me into doing the Kubernetes. Ha -ha. The stuff Kubernetes, like <laughs> uh, last time we were talking about that. So I'm working on um, a new version of Killer Video Docker Common. You can see my fork here. And I'm, I'm trying to make a companion project. This is Killer Video All-in-One that Alex created, which is supposed to be the simplest possible environment. I just, I don't wanna, I'm not even ready to do any dev yet. I just wanna run Killer Video as simple as possible. That's this. Okay, so it does say it right this, there. That's true. It does say that. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I should modify the documentation for this repo so that it says not the simplest. And it is simpler than to... what we had before. Oh, you mean, I'm sorry, do you mean Killer Video Docker Common or all in one? Uh, it, yeah, not as simple as all in one. Oh, That's yeah, what I yeah. Should do. I, should, I should put on a link <laughs> to all in one and say this is composable. This is for this is for people that are actually doing development work. Yeah, so we've been that's a good point. playing around with this setup and configuring out different, um, you know, composing and actually doing like a .env file where you specify multiple um, YAMLs that kind of overlay on top of each other to provide the environment that you want. Right. So I noticed that uh, in All-in-One, Alex did, he actually has Kubernetes set up. Yes. So I thought maybe that's just a good place to start um, is to try to emulate what he did. And so, yeah, he suggests Minikube. Uh, I didn't do that. So we're going to do an experiment here and see how we can get how much progress we get with this. I went into, uh, I just, I already have Docker desktop. So right. I went in a little while ago and turned on Kubernetes in here. And we're just going to use that. And I should note that in the past, I had followed Alex's instructions and gone the mini cube route, right? So yeah. I've already got that set up right. and working. I, <laughs> so we know that works. Yeah. And what was funny though, is I, I like, I've noticed the Kubernetes icon there in the desktop, but for whatever reason, when I was, I think it's because I was following his instructions and he suggests using Minikube, I never thought to mm -hmm. just go, oh, okay, I could just do that in Docker. <laughs> so I'm curious to see how easy this is going to be or not. I guess we'll find out. Um, yeah, this is some of the virtues of, of being lazy like me is, uh, you know, always looking for the shortcut. How do I get this up and running faster? What's the hack? <laughs> uh, being the 0.5x developer that I am. <laughs> that's funny i know i just came up with that did you like that one it's funny you made me laugh that that had to have okay. been funny that's i don't good. laugh at everything <laughs> only most things but you know beside the point okay yeah cool all right so uh i'm gonna try to follow these instructions here okay um so, i did install compose right so you see um a tool to help users who are familiar with Docker Compose move to Kubernetes. So it looks like it's going to take a Docker Compose file, yeah, or hopefully multiple files. I'm hoping. I I don't and know on that one. I yeah. I know you can at least pass in so, the Docker Compose YAML, and Compose will automatically generate all of the con yeah. Kubernetes configuration you need. It's really kind of slick. Um, well, I have a trick for this anyway. So okay. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna try this. Okay. Like, I'm gonna take this command and go into my all-in-one directory, and I'm literally just gonna do this and and see what happens. Now, actually, actually, before I do that, what do I have already? That's what, this is what I'm wondering. Is there's already this k8s directory? I think he starts with the default. Yes. Okay. So I'm just gonna rerun this, and it should, I guess, theoretically. Uh, just override whatever's in there, right? So I cloned this repo on June 13th, and this is all the stuff that's in there. 
And that's why, by the way, if you remember when I made that comment in one of our previous episodes, when you were doing the killer video, Dr. Common, I was like, this is wonderful. You can chain all these uh, YAMLs together and make it all yeah. awesome. But then how's this going to work with Compose? But then you showed me how you can use, uh, what is it, the Docker config to generate it? Yeah, a, yeah, we'll a, get there. An effective, we'll get there. Yeah, and a, a single effective uh -huh. YAML. Okay. I was just looking at what one of these YAMLs looks like because I've I have literally not done hardly anything. Kubernetes. So, okay, I'm going to run this command that he gave me. Oh. That's interesting that the Prometheus stuff is in there. Did you configure that at some point in the past? Or what branch did you go from? Because I remember he killed that pull request. That's the one where I was putting the metrics. I'm on branch on. metrics. Oh, collector. that's why. Okay. <laughs> well, good. We'll see if that works. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the... <laughs> that's funny. Let's try this again. Um, yeah. Bunch of stuff there that I don't think we need. Stuff and things. We get rid of some of this junk. It'll regenerate any of the stuff that's in the K8s directory. So but it won't. But it'll. Will it delete the old files? I guess let's just go back and see and find out if it does. What's his? Uh, what does his his instructions say? Does he have anything in there about that? Nope. About regeneration? I, I don't see anything no. there. Okay. Okay. I know that's one okay, of the tasks so... that he has is to put some docs more. Oh, why does it say that? It's super interesting that it's generating these things for stuff that we don't actually have in the configuration. Right? I don't think it does. Maybe that's maybe that's what it's saying. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna go to into here and just delete all these other ones. You know what I'm saying? I feel like right away I got caught with my hand in the cookie jar. Not that it's anyone's fault but my own. Doing the non standard stuff. Hmm. Huh. You're on mute laughing at me. I've been on mute the whole time saying stuff and wondering why you're just ignoring me. And now I know because I was on mute. Or you were why really good deleted. Me. Oh, wait, those are already. Yeah, so I was going to ask. Right. Oh. I was asking why you didn't just do an RM star because, um, and I wondered if you were doing it just to see what was left. Oh. He Maybe checks. that would have been. Yeah, I guess it would be okay to blow away everything. It is. It is totally okay, okay to blow away K8s. Um, he yeah. not only is it checked okay, in, but you will we're regenerate, gonna regenerate it. it. You'll regenerate with the right. compose. Yeah, that's it. That's okay. That 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 will regenerate. I was gonna say I should have listened to you, but I was muted. I so. It, so I didn't. I didn't listen. I to was you totally muted so. the whole time. I muted now myself. I'm totally baffled here. here. I'm totally baffled. What um, has happened? Here? I are you still on the metrics collector branch? No. You feel like you are. Do you, what's your uh, Docker Compose YAML look like? Because I am. I. That's yeah. Okay. It feels like Metrics Collector. It just feels like it. There you go. Okay, now you can just remove star K. It's yeah kill it and then regenerate okay i see what i was doing and it was dumb 
It's okay. No one's judging you. Okay. Except for oh, all wow. of the world. It's so much better. There you go. <laughs> all of it, everyone is. <laughs> I'm going to send a message. That looks better. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. So now, according to our instructions... Oh, yeah, we actually go into that directory. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, that's right. Now, what's interesting is at this point, you just have to have... Let's find out if we even have this command. Okay, good. Yeah, you should. <laughs> now, I'm, this Super is where it's cool. different from what I did before with Minikube because you have Kubernetes running through Docker. I'll be very curious to see if this just works. Like... What? Oh, what? You know what I wanted to hear? Like, what? So, what? It created it. Yeah, I know. That doesn't mean I'm... it's running. No, I, that was a lot easier than when I had to install Minikube and hook up a driver and, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. No, oh, no. I'm not going to. No. So, uh, one of the things, all, all these, um, <laughs> I'm not actually going to see. Okay, so all of my Docker containers for the, the very pieces of killer video, they're not going to show up in Kitematic because Kitematic is showing me Docker containers, but some of these Docker containers are actual pods. Right, right. And so what am I looking at here? I'm looking at a bunch of pods, and I'm actually, I don't know which, which this, of these are. This is where I feel oh, like the minute. dashboard really helps out. So there's a pod, yeah. wait, wait, hold on, there's, but there's a pod for the back end and a pod for Compose and a pod for DSE. So I can see them. And a pod for the generator. Interesting, you don't see any useful logs. In the dashboard, you can see logs. You can also do that with the command line. Oh, 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 okay. So yeah, actually, what's the, you know, off the top of your head, uh, what command I should be running for that? For the logs? Please hold. No, off the top of your head. There's no please hold in. There's please hold. Um, please top. hold in. Okay, fine. 3,000. Let's, let's it's, see if... It's this, not... It, I don't boy. believe it's going to be there. You don't think it's going to be there? Yeah, you try it, but I don't believe it's going to be there. It's thinking. Because Kubernetes uses different ports, and it dynamically oh. generates them. Um, oh, so I'm how trying... will I know? So I really need this dashboard thing. Well, you, you can do it at the command line. I'm trying to I'm trying to find my history uh, on this. Yeah, because okay. that's where cube control comes into play. Give me just a second. So it's not going to be at the usual. The web app is not going to be at the usual port of three thousand. Correcto, totally correcto. Um, try here. Um, what was it again? Oh, do sure cube this. control get pod here. Uh, at, at your command line. Yeah, cube control, space get, space pod. Okay, good. Okay. They're running, These so that's pods. positive. Then you have... I have six of them. Is that what I expect? Would have expected? In this case, yes. Because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, nine, not all of those... I have 10 YAML files, but some of them are services and some of them are deployments. That's I right. Not all, those, not all those will translate into pods. That's exactly right. And that's a, something else that becomes more evident with the dashboard. Um, try, see, I actually have to tell it. See, to launch the dashboard, I have to do Minikube dashboard. It's part of Minikube. But I know you, yeah. you were looking at that blog post for the, where the guy was explaining how to hook up yeah, yeah. Uh, the Docker one. Five minutes. You promised five minutes. I didn't promise that. Who promised that? Ajit promises five oh. minutes. So and that was it. That was on 9th March, March 9th. Oh, okay. So, so if you is, want logs, this all looks pretty current. You can do yeah. uh, cube control logs and then the name of the service. Oh, okay. I, you know, I'm looking for the. Um, there's another one to get you the web, to get you the the address, and I'm looking for that now. Yeah. So yeah, DSE or yeah, whatever you're looking for. Oh, do I actually? This is what I want. Yeah, cube control logs web. Or can it? Um, does I it think, just uh, accept a shortcut? No. I think it accepts a shortcut. Yeah. Um, it didn't. It depends on the name. What's it called? I said web. Uh, I don't know if that's well, what it called, called it or not. Um, not try that. Why not? 
Can't hurt. Yeah, there they are. Now, I'm surprised you're not getting that in the Docker and the Kitematic thing. Maybe that's a Kitematic deal. Oh, so, it th well, this says it's listening on port 3000, but are you saying that's not might not be what it's mapped to? I believe that's, that's what be, I need. That, that's right. I I mean, try it again. Because I did. I, I mean, I hit. It's it's still. Yeah. I know, There's a way that you can get the address. I'm looking for that now. Okay. Just failing. So I should it. get, but I, I do, I need to run down the road here of, of following through on this and getting this dashboard. I think it would be helpful. Okay, I have Docker desktop. I'm not on ooh, ooh, Windows, I'm on it. Mac. Oh, see. Docker version. Interesting. Got all that. I've already done all this. So the way to do it with Minikube is to do a Minikube mm -hmm. service, the service name dash dash URL, and then that will spit out what URL the, the service is at. I don't know how to do mm -hmm. with the Docker one. I don't okay. know what you, you know, reference in that case. But if we get the dashboard, that'll get us pretty far. What if I do this? Yeah, just cut and paste. That's what we do today. That sounds like I'm being here's snide, but I'm not. Here's a random <laughs> command I found on the internet. <laughs> How do I do this code? I don't know. Cut it off, cut and paste it, right? I found this code block. Oh, there you go. Service uh, Kubernetes dashboard created. And then, ooh. so, I should see something else in the list. I don't see it. It may not be a pod. Isn't everything a pod? I got to learn my term terminology here, man. Oh, wait. Okay. What's this proxy yeah, thing? Proxy. See that? What's yeah, that about? Yeah, i do this. You have to keep cutting and pasting so we can... Okay, that's serving on 8001. Okay. I'll try going there. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, go to that. There you go. Oh, what? What? Access denied. Well, actually, I haven't tried. You know, I wonder if you could just get rid of all that API stuff and just go straight to... Uh, Localhost 8001. Wait, where is the dashboard? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. You got to that page. About blank blocked. What? You were just there a second ago. Oh, okay. Run the, run the below command to set the token. Oh. Now, this is not something I had to do with Minikube. Okay, okay. So I will have to see. See, the thing is, this these are these are Windows instructions. So token equals. Hmm. It says that I should use token option. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can get this going. It said five. He promised me five minutes. You're going to try it anyway. Select string. What in the world is that? Well, that's, yeah, he's just piping it to it. So that might be something to do with the, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's Windows specific or not. I guess we'll find out. I see what you're doing, though. That's a good idea. Don't look at my secret. Oh, there's your token. Everyone copy it. 
Copy it right now. Oh, oh darn it. Oh. You know, you'll be you'll be a while hand copying. Hand. Well, I guess you could uh, you Very could nice. just cut and paste that into your so... uh, your app there. Yeah, what is what was it that he was doing? I think he was doing it automatically. Sun, and, splitting it and yeah, setting Yeah, it was it was it was parsing out the token and then setting and then it. Instead of just putting yeah. it in here. Yeah, it looks like it. Ooh. Oh. Oh, oh. oh. there it is. Success. Awesome. Check it out. Okay. So look at that. And this, it's neat though, when you start here, this is why I like the dashboard. Because it, it helped me understand the difference between like the deployments, pod services, so on and so forth. Now, if you go into those individual pods, you can click on one of those. And you should be able to get to the logs. You should also be able to find out where the thing is. <laughs> I'm bookmark this, because why not? You know, I'm wow, that's really cool then, that you can do that. Um, okay, so now what can I browse here? You can, like, here's you can my click on any of the services. pods, and then you can go. To, you see the logs up top. There's a container. Okay, there's the image. I'm sorry, logs. Yeah. Oh, that's going to bring out a new window. But logs from back end. Okay, give it a bunch of stuff. I here. believe you can find out where things are as well. So, like, when you're trying to find out where the web URL. And is. And I only is. have one instance of each of these, but I could. So far. Uh, yeah. You could right. have more. Right. right. It's configured to only have one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then, oh, I see I have an exec, so I can get a shell there, which I don't want so right now. I'm just exploring. And you see the IP know, over like... there. Which one? Oh, you're in the back end here. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's It's not really here. In, oh, oh, that's yeah. weird. What's with that? Reduce the text size just ah. a little bit. Aha. So that's in the internal network, obviously. Yeah. Now, what if you go to the web one, you see? should be able to get the URL. Again, though, see, I was doing all that in the command line. Oh, there, is, well, there was a reason we were doing this. Haha. <laughs> okay. So pods, web. Okay. Now, no where will I find what I'm looking for? Where is the yeah, answer? Here somewhere. There is nothing to display here. Mm -mm. What port is this guy on? <laughs> Details. Yeah, where do I see ports? Pods. See, this is where the Minikube part. Versus. Like, there's okay. If Docker is offering up Kubernetes. There has to be some control mechanism that you can get to. Like with Minikube, I would have specifically asked for mm -hmm. the URL for this. There's, are there some Docker docs on the Kubernetes part? Like what is it implemented in? What can you use to interact with it? You shouldn't have to use the dashboard. You know what I mean? Can I do something actually from inside the container? Oh. I don't know if that will help. There's no config maps. Let's see. Internal endpoints, external endpoints. I'm a little suspicious here. Did I? Oh. Does this mean that nothing is exposed? Well, you can get to it. There will, there I should be. I, I see what you're saying about I the see, external endpoints, though. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, or could I just, can I get to that? Try it. Can't hurt. I bet it doesn't browse. I don't think that's what that's saying. How to get a browsable URL from Docker for Mac, Docker for Windows. Hmm. Yeah, I need to get to my app. Oh, this is so funny. Somebody's asking the same question, saying, hey, Minikube, I can do it this way. How do you do this with Docker? Uh, we can always back off, or maybe that's what we try next time. 
I mean, I'd like to see if we can get through this. I was trying to take the path of least resistance, but that's not really... What happens when you go to local host 80? not actually the least resistance. Local host 80? Yeah. Like, yeah, local host colon 80 or just local host, I guess. Because 80 is default, yeah. Stop it. Just want you to go 3,000 so bad. Oh, my goodness. No one saw it. No one saw it. Nothing happened. Cube proxy. You need... I'm reading here. Let's see. A cluster IP service is the default Kubernetes service that gives you a service inside your cluster that other apps inside your cluster can access. There is no external access. To access it outside of a cluster, you would need to run cube proxy such as mm -hmm. in standard dashboard example. Um, didn't we run well, the proxy? Well, that's what Cube is doing. That's this. This is the proxy. Is that the proxy? Okay. Well, I mean, I think, isn't that? Well, that gave us an external, right? that gave us the dashboard. Is there? Okay. Is it still using Minikube? Just for giggles, what happens if you run mm -hmm. Minikube at the command line? Like Minikube service uh, web. I'd be curious. Like that? Yeah. You don't have it. That's what I was thinking. Uh, okay. That's what I thought. No, it's, I figured you wouldn't have it. Why is it then? Why should this be different? Let's see. Hmm. You had an interesting port there. What was that other port? If you go to, um, when you looked at the web, you had two ports. You had 3,000, but you had another one it was mapped to. In your dashboard. Um, is that really what it was saying? Because inside of Kubernetes, there's going to be the port that the application itself is configured to, but then there is the port that Kubernetes dynamically generates. Where'd that go? Yeah, where, where was I looking at that? Oh, it was under there you services. Go. Yeah, go okay, to localhost so... that port. Let's see what happens when you go to localhost and that port. 32453. Oh, there you go. That really so, was it. Okay. So I didn't think that that was, I thought that was a list. I didn't think that that was a map. Yeah. Or... So this is interesting. That's because a little confusing. So wait, let me. That's a little, so you could go to studio then by 30497 instead of 9091. Because again, one of those is going to be the internal one. I'm surprised that we could get to because it, it all says internal endpoints. <laughs> that is kind of weird, isn't it? I don't really understand what's happening there. Okay, so you think that I can go, if I go to 9091 for studio. I think it'll just look at you. You don't think it'll lay, okay. Okay, so that was a no. Right, but if you go to the other one. But if I go 30497. Yeah, I think it's gonna work. Yep. So interesting. So, okay. So what I learned from Alex and doing the Kubernetes stuff before was that Kubernetes will dynamically generate its own ports um, to talk to things. Because if, th if you think about it, right, what happens then mm -hmm. if I have multiple instances, I have multiple pods for a single service and that kind of deal, right? You can't just be stuck in a right. single port. So it handles that right. for you. Now, the difference, though, that I think is interesting is um, it's different with Minikube. Like, at least from what I saw there. Uh, and maybe I was just wrong, and maybe that was there the whole time, <laughs> and I didn't realize it or something. It very well yeah. could be. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this, this acts is a little bit different. But that's, that's actually pretty easy then, because once you know that, that's like a no-brainer. Hmm. Yeah, but the question is, what if I wanted it to 
What? A, how does all the routing work? Like, it's magic. What if I it's really Kubernetes it magic. Ex- well, I want it to be exposed. Does it? Does it do that? Like, if I want it to, um, if I want it to be at a certain IP port three thousand, there's got to be a way to configure it. You know. And then, yeah, and then I don't. I don't know. If that, is that stuff that you do on top of Kubernetes? Yeah, I don't know, honestly. Okay. The routing, yeah. I, I this is where I still have lots lots to learn. Because so. you're right. Because if you okay. had, especially if you had, let's say you had multiple web pods that were generated, right? Mm-hmm. Because in your service deployment and stuff, you configured mm-hmm. it to have multiple. You would want a single access right. point, and then it would load balance to to those individual pods. Um, so that way I could come in at three thousand and whatever it happened mm-hmm. to be under the hood, it, that's fine. Yeah, I don't know how that part works. But this, okay, so okay, but what, that sounds like that's something that should be on the to-do list. Yes, yeah, but what you did here, the fact that you were able to just use the Kubernetes implementation in Docker and do that, that mm-hmm. was a lot easier than what I had to do to get Minikube up and running. Okay. So I don't know if there's any particular benefit to doing. And one really, or the, the other. key thing of that, the the key the key piece of magic, not magic. Sorry, was the token no generation magic. part. Sorry, it's we high. <laughs> Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not magic. <laughs> there is no magic. That's this right here is the key command. No, I'm sorry. No, maybe it is. Wait. Yeah, that's for the dashboard, but then you have to token, you have to hook it up. That's where I created the dashboard, and then I scrolled down here, and I that. ran this yes. command. Secret default. And that gave me... The token that I could then use to log into the... Yeah. Okay, so I need to harvest some of this information out. This page is, is really good. Yeah. Yeah, um, we definitely should give him some credit there. Oh, look at that. Oh, Somebody had it for uh, Linux, looks like. Yep. To oh, get the to get it. Linux. There it was. Oh. Yep. Perfect. Okay. This is really good. Um, I'm going to go like this later on because I don't think I'm logged in to discuss. What's that? Discus? <laughs> discus? Discuss? Discus? Whatever. Okay, so we'll go back and work on that later. Yeah. So now I want to go over to... Matrix Collector. Let's do it. We're going to go... Oh, yeah. Let's go to your... Uh, exactly. Okay. I'm actually clean on master right now, so that's a good thing. Okay, so... Let's see. I'm trying to think about how I want to do this. Do I... Rather than, I guess I could make someone type a script. Or I could just make a uh, make a script in this directory. What do you mean make a script? What kind of script? Um, just to, like, to run the command. So, here, I'm going to make... I'm just going to copy how he, had, he did it, right? Yeah, I see what you're doing. You're going to re... Okay, okay. I get it. And then I'm going to do a what's on my clipboard. Well, you got to generate your effective. Uh, your... Dash O. Well, I don't know yet. I. Oh. What's it going to operate based on? I think you need to generate your effective YAML. Because it's going to operate based on the that... Docker Compose YAML, to my knowledge. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I do too, but I just want to see what it does okay. when I just do it raw. Okay, okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, convert. That's what I'm missing. I was going to say it felt a little light. Yeah. Dash O must be the output. Okay, well, let's do this. Do it. Oh. Oh. No! No, why'd you take away the directory? (laughs) I think it generated those all locally, yeah? In your current working directory? Oh, it did. Oops. Oops. Yeah, just recheck it out or something. You checked in the last stuff you did, right? 
I didn't do anything in here. Oh, can't. How do I get rid of the those things? Get check out dash. Is that what you're looking for? Is that what it is? That's not a thing. I'm just. That's clearly a thing. Hmm. Oh, is it get check out dot? You did that the first time. I already did that. Yeah. Okay, we're just gonna do this the old-fashioned way. Oops. It's not that many. Stop judging. That's okay, I just gave you a command that didn't even exist, so I can't really judge. Test your ability to influence me with commands that don't exist. <laughs> So now we know that it is important to have a dash O, but... Yes, and you need to tell it where you want to put the stuff, put the things and stuff. Compose, convert. File, flags. Oh, out string. Volumes. Specify file name to save objects too. Okay, I'm going to do something totally crazy. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Yeah, we'll see. I was curious if it, that would work. I mean, you can always uh, redirect that out to a file. Hmm. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see your command again. Oh, you forgot the convert. Oh, right. I bet it doesn't work. It does. I bet it does, but it doesn't. Because well, if you don't specify a file, well, it created. If you things. don't give it a file, then it. But it's not. It's not. Blah, blah blah blah. It's not doing that. So I just don't think that it. Well, your Dockerized application, up. Oh, that's interesting. So up just skips the step of like saving the, I guess it generates the files and then actually runs it. Hmm. Do you have, wait a minute, do you have a Docker, do you have a Docker Compose YAML in this directory? Or is it? I have multiple. No, it's no, no, no. Do you have Docker dash Compose YAML? Yeah, that's what it's based off of. That's what it's running off of. I oh, guess so you do could have, have a, said that. I thought it was implied. Okay. Yeah, there's this, and that's what it you went do. off that's of. You do. That's what it. That's what it ran from. Okay. Backend DSE Studio Web. I'm I'm talking DSE Docker Compose YAML, which right. you do have. I wasn't sure yeah. that you had that. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, I'm going to say. Yeah, just do what you're doing a second ago, where you're going to redirect the output to a file. And then do it, yeah. This backspacing is better than typing. <laughs> okay. Said no you don't one need a, you don't need a, uh, an option parameter for that. 
like a dash F or something? To, to... Oh, you know what it is? It's convert file flags. Mm, okay. I had the order inverted. Okay. Huh? You have to sp oh, it's a dash F. Look at that. Yeah, I wondered about that. Hmm. hmm. That's a little misleading, is it not? It does say file and then flags. Dash F specifies an alternative compose file. Yeah. Oh, whoa. what was that? Volume mount on the host isn't supported. Oh, because we have the external volume, yeah? Yeah. Interesting. But it sure did it, though. It used your Okay, effective. so how are we going to get around that? Well, maybe for now we don't. Maybe we, we back that out real fast and see if we can't get something like the metrics collector or something working and see that it works. I want a rocket ship before I crawl. <laughs> okay. Fine. Fine. So, okay. So what am I going to do here? This is where I feel like I would like to have um, a script that like touches a random file okay so you know writes it out to a random file and then deletes it because hmm. how else am i going to get this thing to run this is, seems very it's a little mean? bit opinionated about like i just want to write a script that like does the docker compose config writes it out to a temp file with a random name and then pipes that into compose convert since apparently I can't I can't make it go from standard in hmm yeah right yeah I still feel like that's more rocket ship yeah, I'm still thinking about the rocket You're right. I'm still designing my <laughs> rocket ship. So. Okay, so it did not like the volumes yeah. or the op center. Oh, it didn't but like the, op center either? The, well, the, met, the... Wait. I saw the error with the, the volumes. I didn't see one for op center, but I was so, looking for that. Uh, DSE data, that's for volumes. And the test tester conf is not is for op center. Oh, okay. So that's because well, we don't have to do that. So these are, but but yeah. here's the thing: is that the metrics collector setup also involves yeah. external volumes. Yeah, I wonder then if there's a way around that, or if that's kind of. Uh -uh. Well, there's got to be a way to do that. Yeah. I got to be able to to specify something to, in order to, to provide a volume isn't supported, worn volume. Well, it seems like it just is Ignoring passed on the host. So I, it seems like it might run. It just isn't going to have that configuration is what I'm seeing. Ignoring path on the host. Volume mount. So it's just not going to run? Well, like I, the way I'm interpreting that is if if the test cluster conf, you know, if that whole thing doesn't work, then the when you start op center, it's just going to start without the configuration is all. Now for the DSC data one, that's going to be a little different. We want, we that's, just... So that is not going to have 
a data directory yeah. that gets saved out to our host. Right. So I feel like we and should... we're not going to have it hooked up to the DS. And the other one is. Okay, well, maybe we should just run this and just see if we can even get that running. Yeah, I would, yeah. I would even say, like, remove the volumes reference, and it's so what if it, for OpCenter, so what if it doesn't get the comp file? But yeah, you can see what happens. Now, don't you still have the other one running? Don't you have to kill that one? Oh, kill? You know, the, the previous, so you've got all the other Kubernetes stuff running from the other mm -hmm. directory. How do I how do I kill that? That's a great question. Again, in uh, something that's not Minikube, I don't know. <laughs> How'd you start it? <laughs> Hold on, buddy. Yeah, this is the area. There's all those. And then... What we did originally to bring it up was apply. Apply a configuration. See, in Minikube, I would say Minikube stop, and it would take it down. Delete resources. Would I, if I just deleted the pods. You're still going to, if you delete no. the pods, it's going to recreate them because you still have the services and deployments running. That's my hunch. Okay, so I can do a get all. How do I bring down everything? Yeah, I'm not sure with this. Stop and Docker RM. <laughs> no, Docker stop. <laughs> Aha. Okay, so that doesn't help. Maybe dot. Oh no, you gotta be in Q, uh, you gotta be in the K8's something. directory, right? Because that's where you did the apply. Yeah. Well, we'll see. There you go. Now, what's it look like in your kitomatic or kitomatic or whatever? I clear them out. Kitomatic. There's definitely or, fewer things. How about, yeah, how about your dashboard? Well, the dashboard I would expect would be. funny though because it still seems to show a lot of things. yeah yeah that was interesting but maybe it's taking a, it looks like it's just 
like slowly killing things. Killing the okay. Let's see what it says here. Okay. Well. Okay. Is your dashboard right. gone, or do you have? If you do get pods now, is it empty? Oh, oh get all, yeah, would it have so. killed the dashboard? I I would think so, right? Well, my session expired. Oh man. What's your secret default? Describe it. No, I don't want to. I'm just about to show everybody. No, no, I'm not. I was so excited to see your secret default. Okay, yeah, so it is the dashboard's there, but notice that all the uh There's nothing there. Yeah. But it why did it log me out? That was rude. Why did it say my session expired? Just because I killed some stuff. A little bit judgy. <laughs> okay, so then I'm going to do this with the thing. What was it? Compose apply dash f Go, huh? Do it. What is it? Yeah, what in the hell? Oh. Oh, cube control. That's Duh. why. <laughs> I got. I did the same thing. I got thrown the same way. Why doesn't it work? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Whoa. Well, I tried. So let's see what it does. I mean, I okay, wonder if your so dashboard. Now, we have... now get pods. Cube control, get pods. We have more stuff. I mean, they may not work, but this is definitely a step in the right direction. So now we have op center. That's working. And this seems to be the laggard of the bunch in terms of coming up for some reason. Now you can do a watch. Do you have watch? I, I think I do brew I install watch. watch. Do brew install watch. Watch is really nice oh. because then you can do a watch cube control get pod and it'll automatically update for you. Yeah, if you type it, you'll know it. Okay, then yeah, brew um, space. Yeah. I was just playing around with my brew before. Uh, uh, <laughs> that was actually. Um, what did I install? That, that was how I installed Compose. Yeah. Composed with the kid. Which I keep wanting to to uh, call compose. I composed. And then I could show you back up in the history the the total train wreck of uh, me trying to figure out what's the best thing to do with homebrew uh, in uh, order to. Um... Oh, it's not there. Uh... Okay, so. Now do do that same command. Do uh, watch cube control get pod. It's it's I love that watch command. Yeah, and then it'll just automatically update those for you. Oh look, so op center is ready, or at least it's one to one. It's not zero anymore. Interesting. Yeah. So if we go and find your port again, it should. Be, I would think it would be a different port. Yeah. Let's see what the dashboard shows. That animation graphic is just wonderful. Look at that. Op center yeah. is there. Okay. And then I'm going to go and look at services. I See your, what port your web's at. Okay. So 32511. My web's at 32511. And this was. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Denied. It must not be up yet. Right? Maybe. Yeah, it could be. It could be. I mean, we haven't given DSC that much time to. 
No, we haven't given anything that much time. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it might be running, but it might not be ready. Op center. Well, this doesn't have a... Interesting. It's straight up at 8.8. .8. That's its normal port. Could be mm. the way it's configured, though. And <clears throat> right, so nothing's there yet, is what I'm seeing. What's your get pod show? Your watch get pod. We got five minutes left. I mean, it says it's just running. We could look at the logs. See if we, we see could. Um, I think I was going to look check out real quick. Darn it. Oh, there's that token. Everyone copy it right now. Darn it. Um, <clears throat> totally pausing that video. <laughs> Killer video. Docker cop. And then I have a next directory and then I mean, so that says the target port is, how does this differ from? Hmm. That, but that also says target point. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, That's a good Alex question the right The way now. that those things are exposed doesn't really look any different. Yeah, I'm with you. That's a good Alex question. Mm -hmm. I think we should, we should probably bring Alex on for some of this during the Kubernetes stuff. You know, it doesn't matter. It's like 12 midnight where he is or anything. Yeah, I don't know. Nothing. What about our other one? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, okay. so that's it's interesting. Trying. So the web app is coming up. It's trying, yeah. Maybe we just haven't given enough time yet. That feels like the web app before all the plumbing is hooked up. Like if we take a look at the DSC... Uh, like DSC yeah. config, what's it look like? Is it completed? Oh, that's right. Duh. None of this is going to do a damn thing until that DSC config is completed. The pod. That's my oh, there's my watch. Yeah, see, it's complete. Oh, wrong one. Yeah, see, it's not completed yet. So what's going on with DSC? And the back end's already been started once. Restarted. Yes, yes, yeah. That's actually something cool like Kubernetes does. Out. It did, yes. Yeah, so what's okay. DSC config doing? If you take a look at its logs. I think, yeah, duh, I forgot that there there are parts in there that need the DSC config to go, just like any other time. What was the command? Get log? Is it just log? You've got it in your history. If you uh, grep to uh, mm. uh, log. I don't know if it was in this window. Is it just straight up log? Logs? Logs, maybe? Why does the DSE config not have a... Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, dash F do you need maybe? Oh, see, it's just about there. It's just taking its time. Um, it's on the gremlin. Oh, I know. It's configuration complete. I bet you your uh, pod should be completed here soon if it's not already. This That's the DSE users, but the search index is next. Oh, right. you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. No, no, it's done with graph. Yeah, that's it. It's already done. Oh, ensuring graph is yeah, created. No, yeah, it's, it's yeah that's done. the last okay. message. Yeah, that's the last message. So if you go back okay, to zero, module, one, there it's completed. Back. Now if you take a look and refresh, yeah. Okay, I wonder if the generator uh, timed out as well. It just took too long or something. It hasn't restarted. Well, the generator seems to be running, so we could check the logs of that. How about, how about op center? Okay, but... Is AppCenter doing anything yet? Mm -hmm. 
Was that this? Yeah. It is interesting that that one has that target port, not one of the generated ones. Yeah. And it, it, yeah. If we refresh that, does it still show that? Interesting. Yep. Notice, though, take a look at DSE. Notice those ports? Those ports mm -hmm. are what I would expect for DSE. Nine zero four two eight one eight two that kind of deal. Yeah, yeah. Well, but it says internal endpoints. Yeah, what was it? There's okay. Well, I have some a bunch of learning to do about how the ports are getting mapped and how. Uh oh, to tell we're getting it we're getting kicked off. Man, the next is saying one minute till security stream, and it is. Yeah, five. we better we better get off. We better. We got told. All right, let's let's wrap it up. We're gonna transition. We have a clear handoff to our, our next program. It's super awesome. Have fun, Carrie and Eric. Later. <laughs> Mando next. All right, see you guys. <laughs> yeah.